Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on prokaryotes. Uh, as I mentioned before that there was nothing much to talk about in prokaryotes because we have already discussed eukaryotes in details. So now based on whatever we have studied so far, let us quickly see what were the similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Both have a cell membrane and their function, their structure, everything is the same. Both have genetic material, just that in eukaryotes it is enclosed inside the nucleus, whereas in prokaryotes it is just scattered. Ribosomes are present in both of them and in both the places ribosomes help in protein synthesis. Cytoplasm is present in both of them. So these were some of the similarities. Now there is a theory into existence called endosymbiosis theory. What does this theory say? This theory says that eukaryotes evolved from prokaryotes. That is the complexity which we, you all will agree to this, that the complexity is more in case of eukaryotes when compared to prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, more organelles are present. So the complexity is increasing, whereas prokaryotes are pretty simple. You just look at the time we spent in understanding prokaryotes because there is nothing much to talk about. So now more complex things always evolve from simpler things. In fact, when we uh, studied about evolution in our class 10, I was telling you that bacteria are supposed to be the oldest organism on earth. So from bacteria, all other organisms evolved. So bacteria or the prokaryotes were said to be the simpler organisms. Gradually with time, with many different uh, evolutionary trends, some or the other new organelles started evolving and that is how eukaryotes evolved from prokaryotes. And the theory which says so is known as endosymbiosis theory. So now let us quickly differentiate between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Now the similar, the, there will be more differences than similarities. So talking about the eukaryotes, we know they have membrane bound organelles. Here they do not have membrane bound organelles. They have nucleus, no nucleus here. Here you have the compartmentalization of cells. Here there is no compartmentalization. So that way, looking at their structures, you can find out a lot of differences between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. So with this, we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that this lesson on cell gave you an in-depth knowledge of the different cell organelles uh, of uh, the structural organization of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So now it is question time. It is time to check how much did you understand from whatever we studied so far. So let us look at question number one. It says which of the following is not correct? Please be careful it is not correct. Robert Brown discovered cell. Is what is it is what was it Robert Brown who discovered cell? No. It was Robert Hooke who discovered cell. Robert Brown was the one who discovered nucleus. So this person on the right side of the screen, you see, he was Robert Hooke. And Robert Hooke discovered cell. Whereas long time later, this scientist named Robert Brown, he discovered nucleus. So since both of them are Robert, so sometimes people might get confused. So this statement is not correct. Sclerin and Schwann formulated the cell theory. Yes, that is right. Virchow explained that cells formed from pre-existing cells. So that is how Virchow modified the cell theory. A unicellular organism carries out all its activities within a single cell because they don't have any other choice. They are made up of only one cell. So that one cell has to carry out all the activities. Let us look at the next question. New cells generate from, so how are new cells formed? Now before I show you the options, I'll ask you, how are new cells formed? Remember your cell theory. Cell theory, it said that all organisms are made up of cells and cells arise from pre-existing cells. So already existing cells give rise to new cells and this was told by Virchow. So you have so many options. Bacterial fermentation? No. Regeneration of old cells? No. Pre-existing cells? Yes, this is the right answer. 
and this was told by Virchow around 1855 that cells arise from pre-existing cells and that is how he added this as another postulate to the cell theory. The next question match the following. Christe, cisterne and thalapoids. Christe. So Christe is part of Yes, it is part of mitochondria. So we saw that the mitochondria has an outer layer and an inner layer. The inner layer was deeply folded and each of those folds was given the name of Christe. Cisterne. So cisterne is a part of Golgi apparatus. In Golgi apparatus, we saw there were disc-like structures like this which were arranged parallelly. So each of those disc-shaped structures were cisterne. Where are thylakoids? They are present inside the chloroplast. So inside the stroma of chloroplast. Question number four. Which of the following is correct? Cells of all living organisms have a nucleus. So do you think all living organisms will have a nucleus? Can't there be any organism without a nucleus? Think about it. Both animal and plant cells have a well-defined cell wall. This is not correct because animal cells do not have a cell wall. Only plant cells have. In prokaryotes, there are no membrane-bound organelles. This seems to be correct, right? Because in prokaryotes, you do not have any membrane-bound cell organelles. Cells are formed de novo from abiotic materials. No, cells are formed from pre-existing cells. So this is also not correct. So which one is correct? Cells of all living organisms have a nucleus. This is also not correct because there are organisms where you do not have a nucleus. For example, the prokaryotic cells, you do not have a nucleus, but still they are living organisms because they have the genetic material which the nucleus normally contains. It is there, but nucleus is not there. So which is the correct statement? This one. Prokaryotes, there are no membrane-bound organisms. Look at question number five. How do neutral solutes move across the plasma membrane? We talked about the processes of diffusion and osmosis, you remember? So the neutral solutes will move by osmosis or diffusion, whatever you call it. That is, they'll move from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration. So this is often known as passive mode of transport. Now, can the polar molecules also move across it in the same way? No, they cannot. Why? Because when you look at the plasma structure of plasma membrane, it has a bilipid structure. So what happens? The entire hydrophilic end is here and the entire hydrophobic end is here. Now, this is hydrophobic in nature. That is, this is non-polar in nature. So if you ask polar molecules to pass across it, it will not be able to pass because of this structure of plasma membrane. So they need somebody to carry them. So how will they move? They will be moved with the help of carrier proteins and that mode of transport is known as active transport. Let us look at the next question. Name two cell organelles that are double membrane bound. Now we have spoken about quite a few cell organelles which are double membrane bound. For example, the mitochondria, it has a two membrane, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. The next one would be the chloroplast. It again has two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. Now characteristics of these two organelles, I don't really need to tell you because I have already explained all these things. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of cell. It produces the ATP molecules. Chloroplast helps in the process of photosynthesis. You can yourself tell the characteristics of both of them. So with this, we reach towards the end of this lesson and I hope that uh, this lesson on cell helped you. However, you had learned the basics of cell in your junior classes, but here we have learned everything in depth. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, 
find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.